So Tim, back to you for studio buildings and facilities. And I think we're gonna to have to pick up the pace if I can get you to- Yep, we will rattle on. through the um, next exciting bit of facilities <laughs> and buildings. And, and obviously everyone will be itching to read the report afterwards. Of course. So um, design of stages, offices, post-production facilities and other such buildings. So the current challenge, um, obviously there's aging infrastructure, as I say, some buildings more uh, usable than others for current changing demands of the industry. Um, some people we saw perceived limitations to retrofit, but on the other hand, uh, we Vic, uh, Arab have, have had more clients coming and asking us to put studios into all kinds of crazy places from uh, carpet warehouses to supermarkets. Um, and uh, so this question about using, build it, using buildings that already exist, so we don't have to invest carbon in building new ones is a is an interesting opportunity i think um Tim, would you mind sharing your screen please oh yeah good point thank you all right okay is that better it is so, yeah excellent so we're on to the current challenges with of studio buildings so um utilization of spaces obviously we want to make sure that the studios are being fully used uh, in all their spaces and this is this is something we've tried to address in our recent designs where the size and proportion of the buildings enables them to be either a recording space or a workshop space uh, or a sort of general utility space so we, we avoid the issue that you design something really bespoke as say a canteen and then 10 years down the line it's totally useless for use in the film in a different use um, so we talked about retrofits. Um, another issue is about management of energy that we talked about. So the idea of a building management system that tells you what's going on in the building. So and many buildings don't have that. It's relatively new. Uh, I guess some of you may be familiar with the idea of a, a nest system, say, that gives you feedback on what you're doing in the building, that kind of intelligent system. So, um, and the idea to make, to make our facilities in a way that they won't become useless in 10 to 20 years down the line. Um, so repurposing buildings, building products as a service and smart building management were the three topics that we covered in buildings. Uh, in the repurposing buildings, we're talking about flexible spaces um, uh, and a uh, uh, really making total use of, of the site of the studio sites that you've got available in this little cartoon on the screen uh, we're, we're showing a backdrop that's suspended off the wall of the studio and that's just a little trick that we put into some of the master plans that we've been working on with studios so that actually the buildings can become the back lots uh, maybe you can configure the streets such that they're appropriate for European boulevards or something like that, whatever you can do to maximize the usability uh, of the carbon you're investing in making a studio. Um, so when we come to looking at building products as a service, um, maybe modular construction, so uh, elements that can come with a frame that can be taken away and reused uh, rather than thrown away. Uh, we're talking about more intelligent buildings, so buildings that can give you feedback on their performance. Uh, this is what we mean by building management systems and smart building management. Uh, so they tell you when they're going to need maintenance because they tell you that the efficiency, for example, on the air conditioning system uh, is dropping and therefore you know something needs to go and have a look at it. Um, another new innovation in the sector is the idea of products as a service. So instead of buying lights for all your studios, you could enter into a service contract, much as you do with your mobile phone and your TV provider, uh, for example, for lighting. So you could go into a contract with somebody like Philips and say, we want to have so many kilowatts per square meter of lighting in the studio and you pay per month for that. Uh, and then the incentive is on the lighting provider to make it as efficient as possible, because obviously that way they get a bigger margin between what they're spending on the uh, supply of that energy compared to what they're charging the client. 
Uh, and then when we talk about smart building management, building information modeling, this is where we effectively build a virtual version of the building uh, and how it operates in our computers before we build it in reality. Uh, so we can simulate how the buildings are going to operate, uh, but then that can go on into facilities management uh, and giving people dashboards and data uh, provided that we've got the sensors put into the building uh, that will then give the feedback loop so that the building system in the building. Other uses for sensors obviously are stuff like turning lights and heating off when there's nobody in the room. Uh, and that kind of um, requirements, um, service-based procurements and operations and maintenance approaches, keeping things as efficient as possible, um, using BIM to optimize the initial design and build an operation of facilities so we can effectively pre um, we can pre-design the we can test the operation of the building before we build them. Uh, and real-time data on utility consumption. Um, those are the things I think I've talked about. Fantastic. Tricia, have we got any, just one quick question before we move on to the next section? I know we've you know, got to keep it, keep up the pace. I may say, don't field any questions. I've been desperately trying to answer them myself. Um, yeah, I mean, we've got so, 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 so many questions. It's hard to know where to start. Um, there is a lot of questions coming through, actually, which I'll summarise. There's quite a few on this about, are we sure that the solutions that we put in place are not worse than the problem? So as we start to create new technologies and, and, and um, develop new technological systems that are dealing with one issue, are we going to be inadvertently creating um, emissions um, elsewhere in the supply chain? And I've tried to respond to one of those questions, saying that measurement is key. And I know that that is a big theme throughout the report, but I don't know whether you could just touch on that very briefly, Tim. Oh, big question. Yes. <laughs> um, that, yeah, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. That's, that's why measurement is important. Um, you know, we've had 10 years of energy regulation in the UK now, uh, and the government are claiming on that basis a sort of 40% reduction in energy use of new buildings. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, and now we're only just realizing that the embodied carbon that we use to make buildings is becoming an equally big problem, but we never measured it. Um, so all of these things, I think the feedback loop is really important because if you do try something and discover that it's not better than what you were doing before, then you obviously need that feedback to be able to change direction rapidly. Um, Consolidated measurement and, and, and reporting, I think, is going to be absolutely critical here.